Amen. Very quickly, I would want to just introduce something to us and trust God that God will give us grace to tie it up and we'll have encounters in his presence. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, scripture began to speak. He says, And God said, the company of fellowship of the Elohim, he says, let us make man in our image. Please tell your neighbor, image. He says, after our likeness. Please tell somebody again, likeness. He says, and let them have dominion. Dominion. Not just the man, both the man and the woman. Because he says, let them have what? Dominion. Dominion first over the fish of the sea. And the fish of the sea there is a metaphor. The fish stands for the life form that inhabits the territory called the waters and the sea. So it means that if any kind of civilization is instituted upon the water, the dominion of Adam will still cover it because they have given him dominion over the legal occupant of the sea. So marine spirits and all of their initiative has been factored under that detail of dominion. So it is because of a dominion that covers a territory, that covers a region. Anything that enters that region has been subjugated to the declaration of that dominion. So it is almost like coming into an area that already has a governor. You enter and immediately the governor becomes your governor on the strength that everything in this jurisdiction is under him. So they gave Adam dominion over the fish of the sea. Please, let's have my scripture. It says, and over the fowl of the air. So even the prince of the power of the air, before his civilization was instituted, God has handed over dominion to Adam over the powers of the air he says and over the, the the yes and over the cattle and over all the earth mind you in case you thought god was talking about animals he had to emphasize it that this dominion is to be over the earth is that in our bible come on is that in our bible dominion over the earth as a whole then he went further and says and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Genesis chapter 5, verse 3, quickly. Let's, let's read together, everybody. It's projected. One, two, go. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness. Tell your neighbor his own likeness. The original design, mind you, was God making a design called man in God's own image and after God's own likeness. But now Adam has fallen and Adam was going to continue the creation franchise. And although he's doing it now, he is creating species and natures that is after his own likeness and his own image. Not the image of the one that he was created after. He has lost something already. This is where all of the link to all patterns and family bodies and challenges of altars were built from. That the departure of one generation can rub off on their offspring. So you are not a sinner because of something you did. You are a sinner because of who gave birth to you. Before you, <laughs> before you took any step as regarding your own choice, as soon as you arrive time, iniquity has been engrafted into your nature. It was only a matter of time before you began to exhibit what was inside you. So sin was a nature already, a nature you carried around. So you don't need to do something before God tagged you as a sinner. You are a sinner based on the kind of betting that happened to you. Adam brought forth after his own image. Give me my scripture. And after his own likeness. Let's read together. One, two, go. And Adam lived a hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own words. 
and afterwards his image and called his name Seth. Follow me, I want to tell you a story. The fall so affected man. He affected man so much that the departure was too much for Adam to bear. And Abraham began to give birth to children. And the children of Adam also began to procreate. So they continued to give birth and give birth until it came to the seventh man after Adam. And by then, Adam was 622 years. Mind you, Adam died at the age of 930. So Adam observed the generations before him up to the time of Methuselah. Methuselah was 60 years when Adam died. And as different offsprings were coming forth, they would sit down by the coal of fire because now they had to find ways to, 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 to create things that they have lost from the civilization that they were driven from. So they began to invent things. And they would sit down and Adam would tell them stories of what man was like. And it was one of his offspring that inquired the right way. So one guy called Enoch began to ask his ancestor Adam, tell his father questions. What was it like before we fell? And Adam found one whose inquisitiveness was calling for a dimension for restoration. And suddenly the scripture began to tell us something. That as soon as Methuselah was born, he says, and Enoch walked with God. Walked with God. You see, something will happen in the house today while we speak. A restoration of manuscripts a restoration of blueprints that has been lost for many generations. It will come back to your face. The creature that was designed so that death will not have power over him. But now when he fell, the verdict became the day you eat this thing, you will die. And the verdict came to pass in the life of the Adam. But one of his seed carried the manuscript and domesticated the building plan and lived after that order. And the Bible says he lived until he was not. Time could not contain him again. The transition based on the revelatory powers Adam gave to him. As he practiced these things, the earth could not hold him anymore. You can outlive the purity of the earth. The earth is a falling world already. There is a level of purity you attend to. That the earth no longer hosts you. So he says men of whom the world was not worthy. The earth will submit that I don't have the statue to host you. The president can want to pay a visit to your place and it will take some editing, some refurbishment, some kind of a renovation to happen in that territory just so that you can have the statue to host him. And so a man began to walk with God to an extent that time, time could not hold him again. And I'm sharing something and I want you to follow me. It was in Enoch. That was one of the first times we found out that the idea God always had was to enjoy more fellowship with man. So the end of your fellowship with God on earth is more fellowship. So you walk with God until you become closer to him again. When, when they say he was not, that was the first typology of the rapture. The rapture that we are waiting for at the end of time. From the beginning, a man lived it out. Mind you, what I'm trying to share, if you pay attention, I'm trying to tell you, the rapture will not be decided from the heavens. It is the spirit and the bride that will say, come, Lord Jesus, come. And the spirit is in the earth. The bride is in the earth. Both parties are earth bound. It is the earth that will decide when the coming of Christ will be by attaining unto a stature. If that stature has been attained, it is that stature that is the voice of saying, come, Lord Jesus, come. And Enoch was the first person that preached that sermon. He animated it with his life. He attained a stature by which it was necessary for him to be raptured. But by the grace of God today, as God will give us grace, part of what we will be exploring we are going to be checking out what the original design and the intent of the great monarch was as touching creation, as touching man. Because we have so wandered away from the ideas of God 
And I tell you the truth, I am heartbroken by the surge of antichrist systems that are challenging everything we hold dear and everything that borders around the oracles of the spirit. There is a culture in the United States currently and it is being perceived as civilization and is rubbing off on all of the other countries that pledge allegiance to them. It's a culture of liberalism where you just think, just entertain, look, don't, you are not a judge. Just, so somebody gets up and say, call me a she and he's a guy and you are, you are put under pressure to call him whatever he chooses to be addressed by. Mind you, by seeing a man and choosing to call the man a woman, you are a lie already. The liberals have come up with all kinds of confusion. Formerly, we just had uh, we had homosexuals, people who had their own their own depravity that inclined towards a man seeking a man. We had lesbians, people who have their own unique depravity too, a lady seeking a lady. But now we now have. It might interest you to know that just even on Facebook alone, there are over 100 sexual preferences. 100. So you can, you can be trans. You can be um, um, very funny names. Many. This culture is fast eroding. It's, it's coming. And the average man thinks that there is no agenda behind this. Because the idea is you will continue to live life as though there is no intelligence behind this civilization until the things you hear of in distant lands begin to knock on your doorstep. So we heard of terrorism as things that can only be heard on Al Jazeera happening in Afghanistan. A time came when bomb blasts became a norm in our own country. We heard of all of these ideas of hostility and serious wickedness. We didn't think it would happen to us until it came. And today, I want to sound an alarm again as we tie up the, this particular teaching, the battles of ordination. Please bow your head one minute and ask the Lord. Lord, change my life forever today. Give me encounters only you can give. Encounters only you can give. Make sure you are talking to God. In my life, you be glorified, be glorified. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. It is on account of this bastardization that has happened to the genetic pool that man no longer looks like his reference. So man continued creating and procreating. Unfortunately, what he was creating was offspring after his own image and his own likeness. It continued like that. And then we began to find out that in the technology that the ancient used, now the Holy Ghost has made it very simple for us. It is very easy to come to a revival meeting like this and decide to give your life to Christ at the end of a meeting and submit your ways to God and immediately begin to be engrafted into the household of faith. But it was not like that for the patriarchs of old. Some of them, like Moses, had to be separated for 40 years. 40 years on the mountains of Horeb. Daily, daily separating. He started his life first as a prince of Egypt with royalty and all the comfort that there is to such a description. But then something happened to him. So much so that they had to change a prince 
to a full animal. And he will carry sheep and wander in the dry patches of the desert. And on Mount Horeb, God continued to observe the transformation. What you are happy, that thing you, you experienced as five minutes you came out and knelt down and you went back very excited. For them, in the days of old, it took some people 40 years to attend to transformation. That idea of be not conformed, but be a transformed. Before they could even scratch any level that was not contaminated by the natures of Adam, that they, they could translate to a level where their pre-incarnated identities can enter time. Some of them stayed for 40 years, just standing there in the mountains of Horeb. The Bible says John was in the wilderness until the season of his appearing. They were trying to attain to transformation. They knew they were born disfigured. They knew they were born denatured. They knew their ancestry has been corrupted and they could not afford to represent Adonai with a wrong identity. So they isolated themselves and took time. That thing that they were doing is what the New Testament will call born again. But for them it was taking years before the appetites of their ancestors can be washed off from them. That you came from a bloodline that they have a peculiar yearning for ladies and immorality so they stood on the mountains and plagued themselves with fasting until their spirit became receptacles at that point only then could they receive blueprints as regarding their pre-incarnated identities so you find even Elijah he made the mountains his perpetual residence he lived there there was a level of separation they knew that if this does not happen I cannot, I cannot represent the person they sent me to come and be in John chapter 1 verse 6 John chapter 1 verse 6 he says there was a man sent from God whose name was John God packaged an idea, God packaged a vision and gave that vision a body and the body was going to carry out the assignment but when that body enters that body will look like Adam not God because everybody has been compromised by the fall of Adam so everybody must do something to themselves by themselves this one you must by yourself carry yourself and say Lord I know that there are treasures in earthen vessels. Carry me through the orders of purification until that which is hidden within me comes alive. So even Jesus, the Son of God, had to withdraw and he fasted only the documented one for 40 days. And the Bible says as his custom was, he rose up early before men got up and retreated into mountains to pray. They were trying to attain to the nature of their pre incarnated identities there was a man that was sent from God whose name was John there was somebody sent from God whose name was Emmanuel and when God is searching he is looking for the day that I will rebel out of this cloak of Adam and allow that my ancestry in Zion will find expression and that labor only you can do that to yourself these are the labors that the immortals are putting pressures on men for a labor for a man to rise above the vicissitudes, to rise above the proclivities of his generation, above the compromise of our age, and attain to the nature that you were designed by. And it is only that nature that can fulfill the will of God for your life. All I have been trying to say with so many words is that we are all great, but we were born in disadvantaged positions. Everybody must evolve inside time. It is that evolution process that categorizes men into cadres. Into cadres. The same labor you are not ready to labor, another man will stay quiet and pay the price of fasting, denaturing all the influences of his bloodline and attaining to the natures of Zion. When that man begins to hit certain frequencies, anywhere he is becomes his stage. The stage is not an exalted platform. The stage is the preparation of a man. Wherever you are, when you are prepared, that's when the light of God shines on you. He says, arise and shine. Why? Why would you shine in a generation? Because your light has come. It's like a searchlight. Once it comes upon you, you, you become the focus of a generation. It's not about standing in exalted platforms. Stages don't announce men. Natures announce men. Take your time and evolve. 
evolve. If it's fasting, it will take fast that fasting. If it will take study of the word, stay on that word. The Bible says, for we all with open faces, as in a glass, beholding the glory of the Lord. He says, we are transforming to the same, the same, the same. But today, there is a wickedness that has attempted to fight the process I'm describing. You know, as beautifully dressed that all of you ladies are, to be honest, everything we currently are doing, both guys and ladies put alike, is a departure from the ordinance. Is an attempt to make up for the deficiency that the fall has created. And the challenge is you will not realize it yet until you start making your choices and taking decisions. Then you will find out that at the end of the day, there's nothing you can do that can live up to the expectations of your creator. The only version of you that can fulfill purpose is a pre-incarnated version that can only be downloaded through the oracles of consecration. And consecration is a season that must happen in the life of every believer. So much so that they will, they will slay the old man. That Adam must die. Only then can the second Adam be born. And the second Adam will come after the order of the Christus himself. So the first one was a living soul. But this one you are about to become is a life-giving spirit. This was what the whole idea of John the Baptist's ministry was. He was trying to communicate a mystery of an age that he will carry men, take them and immerse them into a system called water. The water is a system where their identities will be lost. In that time that they dipped you inside, you were regarded as dead. Your old Adam was dead and you got up as you are coming out is the birth of the new Adam, the life-giving spirit. And to approve of this is that you will see the heavens open when the specimen himself showed up and the dove will descend as the Holy Ghost and rest upon. So it means the Holy Ghost will not rest upon this version of you. The spirit of might and your ordinations, the oracles of your horn will only be domesticated and carried by the second Adam. And that second Adam is a version of you that only when you have submitted yourself to consecration, only then can you carry it. Unfortunately, I'm repeating this. If we check from the expectations of God, you will find out that we have lost touch. We don't know what the manual is again. You don't know what a woman should be. So all of our education has been sponsored by the cosmos. They are the one telling you how a woman should dress. They are the one telling you what success is. And unfortunately, it has been defined by the excess of possessions. That's what it has been defined by. By the multitude of substance that you have at your beck and call. That becomes the definition of success to a man. However, the immortals, they have shown us the way before time. So, the average man now can be laboring from morning till night and all he's working for is to increase the value of his bank account. The average man went through nursery school for nursery one to three, that's three years. Primary one to six, that's six years plus three years, nine years. JS one to three, another six years. That's 15 years. 100 level to 500 level, five years, without spilling and without strike. <laughs> Before you even begin to contemplate meaning in life, cosmos has demanded at least 21 years out of your life. What is the life expectancy of a West African? I want to show you why people cannot fulfill purpose according to this template. The prince is in darkness. An intelligence designed the system so that when you will remember your creator, it will not be in the days of your youth. And the demands of Zion will be that remember now thy creators when your strength is still with you and your sight is not dim yet. When you can peep into the corridors of eternity and bring out counsel. A time will come when even though you want to fast, this your body cannot carry it again. A time will come. You can set the alarm and say, I will pray at night. When you wake up, nature will send you back to bed. A time will come. You will travel for that crusade. 
and his hospital bed, you open your eye based on the stress and the rigors of your travel. Your, your physical body cannot bear the pressure anymore. So every man, there's an error I'm trying to address very quickly. You are at the best phase of your life right now. Don't let anybody deceive you. Anything you ought to do should be happening now. All of this mediocrity and procrastination, when I get old, I know in the future, your future is now. This is your best version. Anything God has sent you, you ought to be on that matter now. So he says, I must do the work of he that sent me while it is the day period of my life. Because a night will come when no man can walk. They would want to walk, but the, the, the light to aid them will no longer be there. And there will be many predicaments that will be presented to Jesus. And his one diagnosis will be from the beginning. It was not so. It was not so. Although you guys are used to it now. But this is not the blueprint. Funny enough. An average woman thinks it is the responsibility of a man. To guard the house. To be a wall over the house. To be the prayer warrior. The pastor. To be the example of the child. If you check from the manuscript. The office of a woman that God himself called her. He says, let me make him a help. A help. The only office that can help you must be greater than you. The Bible says without controversy, the less, the less is blessed of the greater. So this is why if you look at a woman like a disadvantage, you will find out why there was immortal wisdom that say he that finds a wife has found a good thing and her presence alone will make you attract favors from the Lord. It is women that shape a generation, not men. Unfortunately, women has been mentored into Instagram and, and makeup and all kinds of carnal and superficial labors. And all these things don't have a voice. They have forgotten who they were. So it will be women that would hold their womb and command the child while it is still being formed and say, I consecrate you to labor for God. Your life, your life will be an altar for God. That child, when he is born, he will try to step out of the way of the Lord. But the utterance of she that bear him will force him back to his ordination. How many women now have disregarded their post and their office you are painting your face there's nothing wrong with makeup you are trying to wear a nice clothes nothing wrong with fashion in fact it says make unto Aaron clothing for beauty right and for glory nothing wrong with it but they have intelligently removed your eyes now you are checking about appearance you are looking at young men you want to marry and all you are looking at is Kai look at her nose you will raise children that will become headache for you very soon with the same kind of nose. Then you will find out that although you are a righteous man, scripture came and immortals gave salutations to Mary. They said, blessed are thou among women. We found out that there is something about you that is different from the women of your generation. He says, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. It was so important that it was only from one bloodline that the heavens found expression both through John and through Jesus. So they were relatives. One bloodline had the prerequisites. One bloodline had the character requirement. One bloodline understand the mechanism. It's not everybody that will miss it. In a generation, there must be those who would hold on and be a mark for that generation. I'm preaching today because of the labors of my mother. And I knew it before she told me. The family was not under God until I was born. In fact, there was beliefs and there was all kinds of affinity to charms and amulets from where I come from. My granddad was a herbalist and a renowned one for that matter. But then, that same granddad came to Kaduna with some charms and he was going to fortify his grandchildren thinking that to stop all the attacks of other enemies from hitting him because they believe that if they want to get to you, they will touch what you love. So he came to come and make incisions on our body and bury some things. And my mother packed us and went to hide us in the neighbor's house and said, this children has gone for a holiday. And my granddad was a wise man. 
he looked at her and discerned that she was honoring him. She didn't want to say no, but she was intelligently trying to keep her own seed away from this corruption. Can you be a mother like that? Imagine if they have buried all kinds of strange concussion in my body and strange affinities are the product of such things. How will I ever answer the call on me? They gave my two elder brothers just normal secular names, just call them normal names as a product of the lack of Christ that was in the family. And when it came to my time, my mother says the beginning of godliness has started in this family. She decided that before my father joined her. This is a woman. You, you are thinking that I want to marry somebody who can lead the way. He can show. <laughs> you are blaming the attack in the family. You say, if only my husband can take his place. What about your place? Did you realize that according to scripture, the idea is and the two shall become one? If your husband did not pray, but you prayed, the immortals heard your voice. And my mom was the one that named me. The name that came from the, my father's family's blood is one tribal name like that. Just looked at you. And, and my mom says, this one will be called Emmanuel. God is now with this family. One day she looked at me and she said, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised, my son. Before you were born, I had several dreams. God was showing me that my seed will be used of God. And she said that was the first time even her too decided to take God serious. I'm showing you the body of a woman. Many of you, you are not even praying yet. You are just here trying to buy another phone that you can use to edit more pictures and post light lightings. Who is a woman? A woman is the gate. The only gate that spirits can enter time from. So every spirit is waiting around a woman. Revelation 12 began to speak. He says, And I saw another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. He was waiting upon a woman who was with child. Waiting on the child so that he may devour him. Even Satan's attention is on women. And you don't know why there is so much pressure to distract women from every generation. The battles of a woman is different. If I begin to chant now or I make declarations, you'll be amazed how many women will come under manifestation on account of demonic, demonic attachment, interest as regarding, they know all prophecies that has gone ahead, all the patriarch that has spoken, all the great things that has been said, they know that that prophecy can only enter time through the gates called the womb of a woman. And if we monitor this woman and carry her through a roll call of sin and make her defied in the moment of her conception, the seed will be defied already before it comes out. So David brought a petition to God. He says, behold, I was shaping in iniquity. In sin did my mother bear me. So I have an affinity for sin based on the conditions I was formed inside. But have mercy upon me. And God looked and said of a truth. I know how you came into time. But I will look beyond your struggles. In sin did my mother bear me. Don't think that thing don't matter. You can compromise a generation. Let me tell you one truth. And it will not be a conventional one. Your reward will not be as a Christian at the end of the day. For every transition God gives you the opportunity to experience, there is accountability for it. If you are just a girl, all you lived was a girl and you died as a girl, you are going to give account for yourself. But if God ever allowed you to be a wife, you will account first as a human being, as a girl, secondly as a wife. Because there are demands. There are demands in the institution of marriage. And if you falter on that demand, although you are good as a human being, as a wife too, there is judgment. And if as a wife, God blesses you with children, you will be judged also as a human being, as a wife, as a mother. As a mother. I'm not talking about women alone. Even men, just be putting yourself in these things. As a father too, there is judgment. So they check, were you a good model? Did you play the role that was bequeathed to you before time began? Were you the reason why your daughter did not believe in God again? Were you the reason why they think Christianity is a joke? Every breakthrough is another platform of judgment. 
is he to whom much is given more to be required so if they gave you more seasons you will account for more seasons huh, it will be better at that day that you didn't even enter any of these things than they gave you children and you did not bet them intelligently you did not interpret the bodies of Zion concerning the child that is coming. And all you were concerned about is that your husband did not send you text messages. There is a place you come to where you know marriage is an assignment. It's not about fun again. It's an assignment. And that assignment is about how they can allow Elijah's enter time. How John the Baptist can travel into time. How Reinhard Boinke can enter again. And we know, we know that only the gates call a woman can stand and say, Lord, if you have any child, any destiny kid, I want to show you why certain women were made barren so that the seed of a man would not, would not pass through them. When they found out that these ones met the consecration requirements, they made sure that physically they will look barren until Zion impregnates them with buttons. Ladies, I beg you to God, hear me today. Hear me and give me your ears. The hope of an age is on your shoulder. You can give birth to children with hunger for God. From small, the child is already forced. Ha! It was David that said, I was casted. I was casted on you. Casted. Not, he didn't have a choice. I beg you, I beg you to God. I beg you to God. Rise above the lie of our time. They want you to live a normal life. They want you to be carried away by all distraction so that you will forget your ordination. I am presenting the battles of ordination, the grand finale of this, this very, very teaching. I'm trying to share to somebody that there is an ordination for every human being, every man. There's an ordination for every woman. I have dwelt so much on who a woman is. Let's speak briefly on who is a man. Scripture says, God made man in his image and after his likeness. And he says, let them have dominion. Dominion dominion ladies pay attention i beg you guys just give me your attention a man was designed to live out the expectations of god as touching the relationship between the church and christ the design of a man is peculiar in a sense that when God made man, inside Adam, Eve was already inside him. So much disparity or so much confusion as regarding what I'm about to share. There is still one technology that will take the woman back into the man because the idea is it was only one creature. It was, it was never two. It was one creature. There is a species of reptile, snake, kingdom animalia, biology. They are called ovoviviporous. It's a species of snake that have both male and female reproductive system in one body. That technology is still with lesser creatures. So that was the design of man from the beginning. That man had inside him the version of a woman. This is why when it was time to make Eve, the, the production material would be carried from inside the man. And the rib that they talked about in the book of Genesis was a metaphor. The rib was not about what part of Adam was used to design woman. They were talking about that which is dear to his heart. And the heart of a man is the pulsating factor of his purpose. So they would make somebody 
because her office is a help that is suitable for you. So she will be dear to that which is close to your heart. Any person that will be your wife is somebody who should be able to help you in your God-ordained purpose. So she was designed from the bone that was closest to your heart. That closure, once they have separated the bodies through the instrument of sex, and that is what spirits call marriage, the woman will be brought back into the man. This is what the secular world are trying to tell you, even in their ignorance, by making the woman bear the name of the man inside marriage. So in the eyes of spirits, the two will now become one flesh, not one spirit. You will be expecting that it to be their spiritual essence that will be addressed as one. God says your body is now one. So if you are praying, Lord bless me, Lord promote this family, and your wife is not happy with you, and she is grumbling in her soul, a house divided against itself cannot stand. This is the door that spirits use to ruin families. Because if your wife is not happy with you, there is only how much you can go. If your wife is not happy with you, it's almost as though you say, Lord bless me. And then God still had you again telling him, Lord don't bless me. A lot of people just fight, 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 then close the door quickly and package and come out and pretend to everybody as though they are fine. I want to tell you the source of why prayers are not being answered. In the eyes of spirits, you are not two people again. The anger that you provoked from your wife and you are feeling like you will not, you will not apologize until she is tired, she will come and beg. That's how long it will take your prayer request to continue to pend. If you consider some of the things I'm sharing today, you will know why you cannot marry just anybody. There are people that are impossible to please. <laughs> and your life will be in serious trouble if your significant other is not always happy with you. Take my advice for real today. I'm not, I'm not joking. Sarkinia <laughs> Was a child that came a girma Sarkinia Kineka Was a child that came a girma Was a child that came a girma In the next 15 minutes I want to share something that I believe will bless us let me make it very easy so that if you are writing let's just put something down <laughs> how to download your identity you were born looking like Adam so this is not your identity we want to explore the technology in God that men use to download their identity. And you see, there is something about identities in the spirit. There are many doors that only answer to identities. Not to pressure, not to lobbying, not to prayer as a matter of fact to your nature there are doors that only answer to certain identities it is only in the day of your power that your people will be willing and it is when that your day of power has come 
when your true natures have been fleshed out and animated, only then would all the people allotted to your rising, they will show up in your destiny once. The, the people will be willing in the day of your power. The challenge now is how to enter your day of power. And that day, every man has such an appointed Kairos season in destiny where the full weight of his ordination will rest upon his shoulders. And in such a day, your people will be willing. You will not know how many people are ready to bear your arm up and fight your battles and defend your name until the day of your power. Suddenly, your people will become willing. Just in case you are struggling, you are trying to convince people, people, it looks like favor is not at your beck and call. What you are waiting for is the day of your power. If such a day comes, suddenly, suddenly, the people will be willing. How to download your identity? Which identity am I speaking about? Your pre-incarnated identity. The one whom God knows. That one he made reference to in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. When he says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, before you had a body, he says, I knew thee and I ordained you a prophet. That form, we want to know how men can download it. And if you pay attention in very few minutes, I will share these things and God will bless us mightily. Number one, it's just three, three, three keys I share with us today. Number one, build capacity. Build capacity. Build capacity. I know just saying build capacity looks like something we are, we are used to. Uh, a common apostle is what I'm used to. I've, I've been building capacity. Let's explore what it requires. What it takes to build capacity. In Psalm 119 verse 130 quickly. The Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. The Bible is speaking in Psalm 119 verse 105. It says thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So you can enter time and you can be confused about what step to take. Scripture says if you want divine direction as regarding the steps of your ordination, it says what you need number one is the word of God because the word is a light onto lamp onto your feet and a light onto your paths. Is that word that will become for you a voice from behind you saying this is the way, walk in it. Any man that is void of the word of God that has not fellowshiped with the of Zion. He will not know his role in the immortal scope of events. You will not even know when the prophecy that is on your life is waiting on you to take a step. So the Bible says he entered the temple and took the scrolls and read. And he says he found a place. He says this day, this scripture is fulfilled. I am the fulfillment of this thing. It has been speaking about me for many years. What have you been reading about? What have you been speaking about? What scripture did you read that hammered your heart as though it had your name on it? Have you ever read a scripture that called your name? When a scripture called your name, it, it was telling you, you are the one to fulfill me. You read, it says, saviors shall come out of Mount Zion. He says they will judge another mountain called the mounds of Esau. And as you are reading it, something is welling in your soul and saying, I will dry the tears of my generation. That scripture is calling your name. He's saying you are the one to make this word to become flesh. Saviors shall come out of Mount Zion. There is too much distraction in the system to make that men will not know the ways of their call. So a man must join into the oracles of the spirit and keep his eyes keen on the counsel of God. Only then would you peep into things that were ordained before you came. And when you find your place, the way Jesus found his place. Ah, the Bible says, lo, I come. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 5, verse 7. Lo, I come in the volume of books. It is written. I came after the volume of books. Let me tell you why. Every one of us here too. You only arrive based on demand. There was a demand for you. There was a cry in time. And you were the response to that cry. 
Your journey started first as a seed of eternity inside Christ. All of us found our root from him because without him was not anything made that was made. So it was from you that God fetched, from Christ that God fetched you from. You are a branch. You are an expression. You are a dimension of Christ. And when you enter time, this is what will happen to every man. There are too much confusion, too many voices to make that it will be hard to hear the voice of your creator. So it must be through making reference again to the book. That's where you will find your place. Suddenly you will find out there is something about me and the anointing of healing. Every time you are reading how Elijah raised the dead, that scripture is making all your hair to rise. And you don't know why you are not responding like this to other scriptures. A scripture is calling your name. You are reading impossible things and you are you are elated. You are reading about something, removing the gate of a city and put upon his shoulder. And your body is boiling. There's a spirit of might calling your name. Come. And all these things are found only on the mounts of Zion. How do men download their pre-incarnated identities? Number one, build capacity. How do you build capacity? intense classroom approach study of the word study of the word God can only speak to you within the boundaries of his word that you know God only speaks within the boundaries of his word that you know God cannot talk outside his word study the word study the word study the word certainly your eyes will open can I share something with us if I have your attention, Anakazu, can you shout amen? amen? I know we all think we are seeing right now. But I'm telling you something. If we off the lights in this hall and off all the lights, although you have eyes, sir, although your eyes are intact, you will not see anything. The reason why you will not see is that you are not seen because you have eyes alone. You are seen because you have lights. It's light that enables sight. There are many things about you you will never know until you begin to fellowship with lights. And it is the word of God that is light. He says the entrance of thy word giveth light. That light suddenly, you want to see angels, go to Ezekiel and Zechariah. Begin to study about the cherubs and the natures of them. As light in that page is entering you, the clearance for your eyes to see. It's like, it's like they gave you a torchlight to see what is hidden. The veil is only hidden for any man who has not stumbled upon scriptures that can unlock those realities. You want to fellowship with the spirits of just men. Go to scripture and be reading their life. Just, just be studying about Elijah. Be reading about him. One of these days he will come to your dreams. And then you will see an ancient coming to dialogue with you. You will find out that you will only see what you know. Only what you know is what you see. In the realm of the spirit, sight is by knowledge. It's knowledge that gives sight. You don't see what you don't know. A pin can be on the ground somewhere here. And nobody would have taken note. But suddenly if I began to talk about pin. And talk about how tiny pin is. How hard it is to locate pin if it's in the ground. Your eyes will become very focused. Suddenly your eyes will have the ability to take note of things it was not conscious of before. It is knowledge that has enabled these sights. So you download who you are by knowledge. As you are reading, building capacity. The word of God is like data. If you can hear me say amen. amen. It is that data that you use to soft the internet. It is the word of God you use to explore the realms of the spirit. Without the word of God, the word of God is your boundary. He is your tour guide. Without that word, there will be strange spirits that will give you strange counsel. And if you don't have the fortification of the word of God, you will come back with blasphemous utterance. So the word of God becomes your boundary. He is, it is the data men use to soft the realm of the spirits. The word of the Lord is the door that opens up to dimensions of realities. It is the things you are reading. So Daniel says, I understood by books. Daniel chapter 9, by books. While he was studying, the same angels that appeared to his fathers, that same angel came and said, I have come to give you skill and understanding. By book. 
You can summon the interest of spirits by developing an interest about them. Knowledge is attractive in the realm of the spirit. Anything you begin to study about is attracted to you. If I begin to talk about Satan back to back, Lucifer, the hidden mystery of his calling, all of these things, one of these days he will whisper something to me. Because for him, what I am is an oracle of his knowledge. He finds out that every time I open my mouth, I am releasing light that pertains to his nature. So he will come to aid me to release what is commensurate with his current stature. Number two, I've dwelt here for too long. After you've built capacity, locate a high place. Locate a high place. Please tell your neighbor, locate a high place. Please, please, again, just tell your neighbor, locate a high place. Anakazo, what is a high place? High places are regions where men offer sacrifices. Altars are built upon high places. High places are places of worship. But in the Old Testament, high places are locations, geographical locations. But according to the New Testament, a high place is not necessarily a location. Men too can become high places. There's a, there's a house in television here. I'm going yellow. I need your attention. I want, I want to share something with you. It was a brothel where prostitutes carried out the full expressions of the bodies of their, their, their lost. And they, they did that for several years, over 20 years. So they were valid altars of immorality and incense of immorality that rises from that space perpetually. And then suddenly a man retired from NMBC and decided to buy that house and drove out the prostitutes. And he used a different paint to change the paint of the house. Remove the old zinc and put aluminum zinc on top. And physically the house looked like it has been renovated. But unfortunately, all the tenants that moved into the new house, it is the quarrel of tenants sleeping with themselves that ended their stay in that house. So they didn't know why they were having abominable practices within the same small space. How the father of family A is sleeping with a five-year-old girl of his neighbor and the man is offended. While he is being offended as they are talking in that anger so that he will hurt this person too. He now told him that I am sleeping with your wife too and the house scattered. And it was immorality in a way, a shade that was not, it was unheard of. And when a prophet came, he found out that, ah, your problem is not, it's not you. It is the government that is in your space. So you are helplessly at the mercy of the government within that space. So that house looks like a house, but in the realm of the spirit, it is a high place. It's a high place for the altar of immorality. That is how you can enter certain places too. And there will be a peculiar temptation that has been registered with those regions. That side you entered is a high place. It was Jacob that was running from his brother Esau. And he stumbled upon a high place on the earth. A place that when he woke up, the only description he had was this is the gate of heaven. It was a high place. A place where spiritual activity was intense. It was Jesus that said to Nathaniel, is it just because I told you I saw you under a tree that you are calling me the Messiah? He says, wait until you see the heavens open and angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Wait until I become a high place. Have you come around some people and immediately, they were not dressed badly, they were dressed very modestly, but the aura of lust is strong around them. Ladies, hear me. Are you wondering why all the guys that come around you only want to sleep with you and leave? If this is your predicament, I bring your deliverance tonight. Are you wondering why no matter how much you want to keep yourself, it just looks like people want to just have a carnal knowledge of you and move away. 
It was while men slept that the princes in darkness erected a high place over your life. And those people are only helplessly at the mercy of the call on the mountains. Your life has become a high place. Unfortunately, you know what you represent. There's a brother I shared with you guys. His name was Brother Gadzama. He was a high place on campus. If you stand around him, you will start crying for your sin. And we knew what he carried. And he was just a brother with a t-shirt. A high place. It was purity that was emitting from him. We were at Makodi, I am Pastor James. That was last year for Eagles Conference. I see. And one of the resource persons supposed to, I don't know how he brought, was sharing how, I think it's Reverend Shegun, how when Reverend, when Pastor Kumuyi came to Kaduna in the 90s and he just came out of the car and Reverend Shegun was one of the people who hosted the program. So he was rushing to go and uh, make obeisance and collect his Bible. And he just looked into Kumuyi's eye. Kumuyi just looked into his eye and said, how are you? He started crying. He said, the how are you came like, like you are filthy. There was so much purity in where the how are you came from. So to relate with where he is fellowshipping with, he felt like, ah, he said he started telling himself, ah, Shegu, you need to start praying. Shegu, you are not trying in your spirituality. Restlessness entered him. He met a high place. The end of any sin is not pleasure. The interest of spirit is to make you an envoy. And when you become an envoy, you become an altar call. You are like a sound crier inviting men to come and fellowship in the same thing that has humbled you. So if righteousness is the nature that you are broken under, it is righteousness that your life will be inviting men to ascend the mountains that you have become. So anything around you, the way we have different fragrance of perfumes, that's how there are different yearnings and different calls, high places in the world. So if you probably are tempted by the spirit of lust, and he says it's just, it's just a mistake, that first one was a mistake. And then you enjoyed what you did. The second time, you are now the one that preconceived the event and aided the process. In that time, the spirit of loss was minding his business, just paying attention to whatever he has to do. Mind you, let me share something quickly before we go. We still have good time. Very, very soon we're out of here. I know... Please just pay attention to what I want to share with you. Just face, face the audience. These three handsome brothers, heavily filled with the Holy Ghost. If by tomorrow morning, this brother suddenly begins to have a yearning, a groaning in his flesh to hold the waist of a lady, this one. And this one begins to feel very jealous about somebody's breakthrough in his, in his house. And he cannot rest again. And he's feeling restless, feeling bitter. He's interpreting his life as a failure because of somebody who's doing well. This is his own posture as at tomorrow morning. And this guy finds out that he woke up with an unusual anger, a hatred for maybe an authority over him. The three of them here will be saying that, Kai, see what Satan is doing. Everybody here too will believe that Satan is tempting this guy to commit immorality. Satan is tempting this guy with the spirit of envy and strife. Satan is tempting this guy with anger and hatred. But unfortunately, to be honest with us, Satan is not omnipresent. It's only God that is omnipresent. Satan cannot be in two places at the same time. Satan can only focus on this guy. And if Satan is here, these two people must tell us where their temptations came from. Can you all hear me? I want to show you how to master it. Because if you realize this thing, you will know why it will be easy to overcome. But when Satan was falling, he did not fall alone. Satan fell with one third of a host that they call uncountable. And one third times uncountable is still uncountable. 
That of there is times in arithmetic. Huh? Now, those uncountable, their greatest strength is to pretend like they are not real. So they are hiding behind the veil. Those uncountable hosts and legion that fell with Satan, their strength is to pretend like they are not real. So while this brother is busy blaming Satan and saying, see what the devil has done again, the very fact that several people can be blaming Satan at the same time is worship for him. Let me tell you why. People say Satan will come and say, Haba, me again, why are you blaming me? Mm -mm. He likes it. That was how Adam relegated his authority. He took the blame and gave to Satan. So a man will overcome first when he takes responsibility and say it is, it is the loss that is inside me that has created this temptation. The Bible says when you are tempted, let no man say he is tempted of the Lord. It is the loss that is in you. So the prince of this world will come. He is coming to find what he can tempt you with. And that thing he will tempt you with is inside you. So Jesus says he came to him and he didn't find anything. So your fall came by something you already love. Is that thing you love that your temptation is built around? So it will be easy for the spirit of lust to come to this brother. And while the spirit is working on him, this brother will be saying Satan is at work again. And when you think Satan is everywhere, you will be conscious of Satan all the time. And anything you are conscious of is powerful. Because actually, in the realm of the spirit, consciousness is our only way we connect with God. Sin is a system that denatures and removes and reduces your consciousness of God. Because it makes you think that God is offended. God is angry. So you don't think God is with you again. And once you lose your consciousness, sin does not make God move. The only person that moved was you. God remained. And sin will make that while you moved, you became less conscious of him. Because you are more conscious the closer you are with him. So while you are thinking Satan is everywhere, you are conscious of him. And the more you are conscious of him, he is real in your life. So the average Christian must now come to a point where he realizes, number one, if not for anything, accept that you are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. So when temptations started, just, just start, start welling up inside you, one of the first things to investigate, Lord, where am I missing it? Where is this pressure coming from? What am I loving more than you? It is when you ask this question, then you will find out, that the very statement of Jesus will come for you. He will come and say, Simon Peter, lovest thou me more than this? You must love something in the world, actually. But once a man loves anything above God, that's your fall. So our pastor came and said, God told Abraham, give me your son, number one. Thy only son, number two. Whom thou lovest, number three. The idea is, if God must do business with you, nothing can be higher than him in your life. Anything higher than God is greater than God in your life. And so if God must show himself in your life, and your temptation is coming from anything that the powers and the intelligence in darkness suspect that this one, you like it more than God, they will tell you to do that in contradicting the positions of Zion. And so because they know that your love for it is more than the love for God, you will not attain. You will not hold on to the counsel of God on that matter. So that's what a temptation is. If we know how temptations come then, you will not blame an external force for your fall. You will sense that there is something I'm liking be, be beyond God these days. I'm beginning to sense that my interest for this particular guy, this particular lady, is beginning to be more than my interest for God and my calling. That will be the good place to overcome your temptation first as an atmosphere before it ever becomes a suggestion. If you, if you master it from there, you will never have any suggestion of fornicate. Because when you sense, Kai, I'm beginning to like this person. Know that the prince of the world, your temptation will come from what you like. And the restoration of the disciples that have left the callings of God and gone back to their secular engagement. And Jesus wants to draw them back to attention. He says, lovest thou me more than this. This is how God will call us back to our ordinations tonight. Lovest thou me more than these certificates. Lovest thou me more than this marriage, sister. 
lovest thou me more than that job? Lovest thou me more than that child? And until he becomes the obsession of your love, only then you will find out for the first time the prince of this world will come for you too. And he finds nothing. Because your temptation is the loss that is already in your heart. They only suggest it to you to carry it out. So Satan is not the mystery. It's not the intelligence behind our fall. Our fall is what we entertained. It's what we allowed. What we give room for until it found expression. Please celebrate them. Ah, our time is fast spent. Locate a high place. There are people, anytime you come around them, you guys are friends. They are not pastors. You only go to visit them sometime. And anytime you go and visit them, one thing will lead to another. You guys will now start talking about spiritual things. And then the atmosphere will be tense. You live there engrafted with a measure of strength. And you are thinking, Lord, I need to do this and this. That's a high place. Locate a high place and stay there. Let me tell you something about God. No man can come to the Father except the Father draws him near. So there are systems of advantage that draws men inside time. It can be a location. It can be a man. And you can find friends who are high places. This space called Anakazo is a high place. So you come here every Friday and the lost was building, 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 building. You know if my feet can enter Anakazo on Friday, something will happen to my soul. So you were running. It's like the demoniac of Gadara. The demoniac of Gadara was a madman plagued by several demons. But then he sighted Jesus stepping into the shores of Gadara. And the Bible says he ran and casted himself down and worshipped. Before the demons would take hold of his vocal cord, he had submitted himself to Christ already. And in that vision, he, was, he has decided that if, if, if I will misbehave, let me misbehave at the feet of whom can help me. And then the demons began to speak through his vocal cord. Jesus, son of the living God, what have we to do with you? They forgot that the few minutes that man had, he ran and he casted himself down in the feet of Jesus and worshipped. This is what this space has become for some people. The hope where you run and go and deflate the pressures of lust. Many of you, the reason why you come here and you find out consecration is, is a demand. Consecration is an emphasis here. It is because it is an altar of consecration. It's a high place that calls men to align to their blueprint. So anytime you leave an Akazo meetings, you are leaving deciding number one to put structures in your life. Number two, you are leaving. You know that lust is flogged out of people's lives every time they come here. Both lost for material things and lost for immorality. People leave this place, sometimes they have to remind themselves that please, um, life is also physical. It's not all about spirituality. <laughs> there is a fire here. A fire that makes you only talk about Zion, consecration, call, immortals, altars. Then you come down and say, wait, but there's a balance. It does this to deflate the pressure of lusts. That is already in the world. So it's a high place that is raised for this purpose alone. There are also friends. There are friends when you come around them. All of a sudden you who didn't have any knowledge in scripture. You will find yourself sharing deep things. And you will wish that those sessions were recorded. Because even you needed to listen to yourself. If you identify that kind of friend, you have found a high place. And it will be good for your journey in destiny to keep them in your fold. Because any time their eyes gazed on you, the corridors of revelations in the spirit opens to you. And you find yourself journeying into things. It's not you. It is a high place that called you. It's a system of advantage. A high place will give you an advantage. A high place will invite you. And no man can come to the Father except the Father draws them near. Our time is fast spent. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to stretch this. I already told us it will end this Friday. Last but not the least, travail. Travail. 
travail. Travail. Scripture says, quicken us and we will call upon your name. You cannot call upon his name if you are not quickened. And part of the systems that quickens us is a high place. A high place tests you more than your desire. A high place gives you an advantage you didn't have in yourself. So once you are quickened, the next thing is to begin to call upon his name. And then you will find Elijah with a rootless prayer life. You will find Daniel praying relentlessly. Praying until the angel came and first gave him salutations. And said from the first day that you started this prayer, we heard you. Your prayer was strong enough to provoke a reaction from the prince of the power of Pesha. And because of your prayer was fervent. Scripture says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous make a tremendous power available. So you begin to pray so that you can enter the day of your power. If you just enter, your people will be willing. You begin to pray. You begin to pray. It is such a time. Scripture actually calls prayer travail. And they liken prayer to the birth pangs of a woman. The labor pain a woman went through before she can give birth to her destiny. So there is a nature, a pre-incarnated version of you that is, is inside you like a pregnancy. And it will take prayer to deliver it. Prayer is the travail. So while you are praying, Jesus, Aras, Katebrendu, Vaikala, Lembrende, Kosovela, all of a sudden you begin to have a need to call your mother. Call. You have not called them for some time. After prayer, you took your phone and you call. How are you doing? Then your mom says, uh -uh. Why did you call me now like this? Actually, we just had one challenge. It's, it's, there's, you will find out that the manifestations of gifts, the word of knowledge is a product of travail. All the gifts domiciled in the Holy Ghost, you give birth to them through your travail. But the burden of prayer is the hard work that men will not do. And let me tell you something about anything that is hard. It's an advantage. You are rest assured that many people will not do it. So the few people who would cast themselves on it, they will stand out in a generation. That time, you choose not to pray. There were over a billion people too who refused to pray. And they, they gave themselves the same excuse you gave yourself. Because the program is from the same flesh, the same reasoning. So they slept. But a handful stayed awake. And they contended for their ordinations. And the horn of their rising was given to them. Then among men, this effort begins to categorize men into cadres your travail God cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows that's what he reaps the travail is your only way to bet the glorious destiny your destiny is like a pregnancy inside you the labor that labor process where you push you push in prayer you push, you pray until something happens you stay there and pray while you are praying the bible says until Zion travails then she brought forth. She brought forth. She brought forth. There are versions of us that will not find expression until we download these things. And the technology of download is what we have shared tonight. Number one. Number one is what? Build capacity. Number two. Number two is what? Locate high places. Number three. Travel. If you put this thing into any season of your life, I give you one month, the difference will be clear. Number one, please build the capacity. You build it by enlarging yourself by the word. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Approved. Build capacity. Number two, locate a high place. In my life, I know high places as space and I know high places as people. There are people God has blessed me with. That any time I'm around them. Some of them, we don't live in the same city. All I have to do is call them. Some of them are senior friends in the faith. If I call them once and I hear that voice, it's like fire is in my heart. It's a high place. Any time lost want to come, call them. You don't even have to tell them the challenge. Just hear their voice. If you practice the technology of high places consistently, your struggles will be few. Because if you want revelation, you see in this hall now, if I want to start teaching about mysteries, there is a brother I will go and stand in front of him. 
And you will not know why he always sits in the seat that he sits. It is because I have found through the intelligence of the spirit that it is easy for revelations to come anytime I'm around him. And it must not be things that I know. He's a high place. Have you located a high place? Have you searched for a high place in your street? I tie it up by leaving this one question with you. I moved to uh, Sabo, the GRA, um, sometime um, last year, I believe. I was at Baji Villa before. In Baji Villa, I made sure I walked around that area at the cool of the day every day until I located spiritual sensitive spots. So, <laughs> while you are passing you will come to a place where as you are in that spot, you take two steps. Ah, it's around here. This is where the network is. <laughs> if you come there any day, any time of the day, there is an ancient that did something there and you didn't know about the person going, but he has left a portal, an active portal is there and you can do yourself good locate a high place and benefit from it daily, so every evening ah, I found that spot I'll go and stay there, sometimes I'll do as if I'm picking a call, but I'm speaking to my father in heaven and the energy in that spot is different I'm speaking about these things and it looks funny to some people but these are truths that you will play with now and leave it. A high place is real. In Sabo, I have, I have been trying to pass around to find... <laughs> I tried to find a spot. I have not found a spot there yet, so I made my room a high place. I, I did something in a spot for some time, so now, even though I don't feel like praying, there are nights when I wake up and sleep is so much in my eyes. I'll just have to roll myself, roll myself, roll. Once I enter that spot, I'm arrested. That spot where I pray, if I, if my leg gets there, there is a consciousness, there's an aura, there's a presence. The way they can build an altar in a space, a traditional altar, and even after 200 years, they have uprooted it and built a story building there. Yet a prophet will call the attention of the bloodline and say, there is something speaking here that has not been told to keep quiet yet. It is still speaking spiritually. That's how a high place too can continue to call. Ladies, make your womb a high place. Let it continue to engineer the interest of this child. Before he comes out, he has fellowship with so much of God. Guys, make your life a high place. Be intentional about what spirit will host your life. And when men come around you, let that become the experience that they get. Can we bow our hearts tonight and cry to the Lord? Cry to the Lord. Lord, give me you. Give me you, O oh God. You can rise tonight. You can rise. There is a realm in God you can ascend to. And it's only attained by the technology of downloads. There is a pre-incarnated version waiting for you to pipe it into time. I have yet many things to say unto you, Jesus says. He says, but you cannot bear them yet. No capacity. Lord, enlarge my borders. Enlarge my coast. Are you already camping around dimensions? Is people already celebrating you? Are people already celebrating you? There is a fashion of you that is superior.
This is a good day to travel. It's a good time to go through the labor so that we can bring forth until Zion travels until Zion travels only then there is a destiny locking in you there is a move that is dumbing out in you it will take travel to think forth tonight Some of you have been building capacity. Some of you, you have been fellowshipping in high places. And tonight is an invitation to travel. Travel and bring forth. Kata kapa kasa pata beko sovera danas. Mem brondo poko sovera zafina nama neko sovela. Arua kobenala. Lem brende fa komba la kaskeas. Sefran de lo mono kombi la zante la eha. A shabela. Umia lo komela na kande. Severeze nama nuko dilara. Hallelujah. One prayer point and we leave. I and the children the Lord has given unto me. We are for signs and wonders in the world. Can you lift up your voice? Ushers, please help that brother. Help that brother. I and the children the Lord has given to me. I and the children that will come out of my loins. The children that will come out of my womb. We are for signs and wonders. Are you? Are you traveling? Era sapaka na manekola. Om brondo poko so vera zanina nela Harua loko bende lenaka Sobo nane kendre berosala Shama kando brondo vera zanita Help them, help them, help them please Make your mouth Was a child a Megirma. Mighty men, mighty men are born on this mountain. The mountains of Horeb, the mountains of Sinai. Mighty men are born. Was a child a Megirma, hey, Sir Kinya Kineke, was a child of Megirma, Sir Kinya Kineke. Was a job. Was a job a came your Was a job a Was a job a came your The power of God is 
people. Was a child okay? The fire of consecration. Fire from the oak of Moreb. Fire from the mountains of Carmel. Where Elijah calls fire. Sarkinia is a mountain of fire. Help them, help them, help them. Over the wombs of people. Over the wombs, the wombs, the wombs, the wombs. I command the fire of consecration to gush upon people now. Now, now, now. Fuck the wombs. The wombs will be Elijah. The wombs that will be my smooth. The wombs that will be Help them, Sir Kinya Kine. Was a child a clay make me Kai, 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 Kai. Yes, yes, yes. I see a channel. I see a channel. A channel for the anointing. It's opening up. It's opening up. Through the of travail. It's opening up. Listen. There is something I see the immortals doing now. I see them like creatures of fire. I see them creating auras around people like perfumes like perfumes like perfumes I see them creating auras creating presence for some of you you will carry the presence of the Lord some of you will carry favor favor as an aura and then you will become a high place a high place that commands that dimension I see auras of fire passion for God up of passion for God help them help them by fire by fire up. Up. I see them in the spirits the hour of fire the hour of fire Lastly, before we go, the hand of God is doing many things and you can see it. Don't get lost. Just focus on him. Now the Lord wants to make men high places. He wants to exalt your head like the horn of a unicorn. He wants to exalt your head like the horn of a unicorn. He wants to make you a high place in a generation.
of Moria, mountains of Carmel, mountains of Horeb, mountains, mountains. Oh, 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 oh. of the son of God it says through you the foundations of the church will be built the foundations having this seal that Jesus is the son of God it's a high place the mountains of Eden mountains of Moria mountains of Horeb mountains of Camel mountains of Sinai Mountains of olive, arise, arise. Hallelujah. Lend me your attention in one minute, please. Peace be still. Each of these ancient mountains were known with separate dimensions of God. Each of these mountains hosted particular predetermined dimensions of God. So scripture says, who is that mountain? Not what mountains are people. Who is that mountain that can stand before Zerubbabel? So the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be exalted. Where are the mountains tonight? Where are Horebs in our midst? where whenever man wants to meet with God it is through you that that encounter will happen you have become a mountain among men where are the mountains of Sinai where ordinations are hidden a man can wander in obscurity until he climbs Sinai only on the top of Sinai then you know who you are where are the mountains of Camel where are the mountains of Camel where the identity of God in a generation is declared. Where the doubt in a generation is declared. At the count of three, I declare by the power of the Spirit, I declare, let mountains rise. Rise. One in the name of Jesus. Two in the name of Jesus. Three right now. Mountains arise, arise, mountains, please help them. Mountains arise as a high place, a high place in a generation. Oh, oh, oh. A high place, a high place. Oh. Jesus, 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 a high place, a high place. By 
the hand of the Lord. A high place. A high place. By fire, a high place. By fire, I supply fire. Fire, fire, fire. fire. A high place. There's a particular case. I will just call it quickly and then we close. I'm sorry. It's a burden in my spirit and I cannot ignore it. I'm seeing a set of mothers to be. Mothers to be. Soon becoming mothers. I'm seeing many angels hanging around you. I'm seeing them waiting on you because of the child, the seed that will come out from you. Your own purpose is to bring that person into time. And that is what you'll be rewarded for. Your purpose is to effectively bring that person into time. And by the hand of God, by the power of the spirits, I supply strength to them everywhere they are right now. Your tests are strong. Your temptations are many. And there is so much interest of demons too because of the angelic presence around you they came for you very early right now i release strength by fire help them please help them strength by fire i release strength strength by fire strength to rise above the lost of our generation strength take it now now take it Receive the intelligence to mentor Samuel successfully. Let it come upon you now. I declare it as I'm commanded. Now, now, now. Come upon them. Now. Please help them. Everywhere. Receive it now. My God, my God, my God. 
you are seeing yourself that you gave birth to a very 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 beautiful baby very beautiful baby and many people are struggling to collect that child from you you are seeing that you gave birth in the dreams to a very favorable child and there are struggles to collect it from you by the power of the spirit I declare now by fire may the hand of the Lord arrest such ones and give them strength to prevail in that battle there is a war a contention a contention to stop you from bringing forth thank you Holy Ghost thank you Holy Ghost thank you Holy Ghost thank you yes help that lady help her it will not be lost it will not be lost no hands join hands oh the bequit house of Zion cannot be lost not in our day and not in our time I'm led by the Lord to speak a word of advancement over somebody. A word of advancement. A word of promotion. I declare by the hand of the Lord and the authority of his spirit. Every door you have knocked on. Doors that have refused to open for you. Doors that has been questioning you. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted. Ye everlasting doors. I declare right now. May those doors finally answer to your call in the name of Jesus by the oracles of the spirit I shift you to your next season in life by the oracles of the spirit I move you to your next season in life by the power of the spirit I shift you from the place of stagnation spirits of delay and stagnation help that lady please help her I confront your agendas in the life of people wherever you are hear my voice and left leave them live their life and never return at the count of three we are going to shout Jesus I see many things happen in the life of people one in the name of Jesus Christ two in the name of Jesus Christ three right now Now, please help them. Help them. Help them. Marital delays. Marital delays. I challenge the spirit husbands. I challenge the agencies. I challenge the causes. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be broken in Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. those who want jobs in the midst of a nation that has declared no job I make a place for you by the anointing in the name of Jesus Christ those who are trusting God for marital settlement I declare by the hand of the Lord may your spouse appear suddenly in the name of Jesus Christ 
those who sense a burden and a call but don't know how to start it don't know the first step to take may you hear a voice from behind you giving you directions this is the way walk in it in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Jesus thank you Jesus please in the next one minute quickly quickly let's just assemble ourselves and sit down quickly we have closed we have come to the end of our meeting take that person out 